Hello friends, this is Ganesh. Hope you are doing great. In this video, we are going to see a little more about object page. So this is the continuation of the previous video. So for an ABABAR, we know the terms called classical and interactive report. It's very simple. The first report, it shows all the details whenever the user select the particular record, then we need to give more details about the selected one in the next page and we call it as interactive report. So same thing in UI as well. The first one we call it as list report and the second one is we call it as object page. So here everything is a page. Um, so now we are going to learn how to display the data in the object page in a different format. Technically they call it as sections. Okay, so you can Sorry, I got the call. Um, yeah, we were talking about section. So section is like uh, normally if you if you want to design any screens, just correlate with your screen painter in ABAP. So screen painter in AC51, we have a layout option. We have a different sections. I have a header, I have a tab strip, I can have a frame, different frames, right? So here we call this different sections and different uh, tabs on tab strips, they have a different tab. So the similar way we are going to design it in the UI as well, but probably the technical terms are different, but the functionality is same. Okay. If there is a screen that needs to be uh, designed based on the user needs, maybe section wise. So here the technically they call it as sections. So different sections are available, uh, available in object page. So now we are going to learn how to make use of those different sections. And uh, in this video, I'm going to show you a header section. And in the uh, uh, and the next one, we're going to use a tab strips, so different tabs. So this is the main idea of this particular video. Okay, so let's get into the uh, slides first. So technically, we call this list report on object page. And uh, here in this uh, video, I'm going to explain this is my scenario output. And for this output, what are the annotations are required to generate that particular output? So that is the way we are going to learn. Okay. So this is my first scenario. First scenario is I have a list report. I'm going to select any one of this particular uh, row. And from that, I'm going to display only three values in my object page. Okay. Simple display. Uh, there is no section. There is no uh, tab strips over here. Okay. Simply, if you select any of the records, I want to just uh, display only three fields in my object page. So how to do this? And here, all the changes we are going to happen, we are going to make it in metadata definition file. No change in interface or your consumption view. Okay. So everything is in one single metadata definition. Okay. There is no multiple metadata definition. We are going to use it now. So here, this is the, the first one or the header one, you have to use it. And the, the annotation is going to play a major role as UI facet. So this uh, facet annotation helps us to design multiple places or multiple sections in the object page. Okay. And uh, initially, these two are plays a little major role, the open bracket and parenthesis. So sometimes we have to use separated by comma, we have to use one more per other. So if the properties are depends on one category, purpose, type, position, label, all coming into one category, so that all, uh, sorry, all the fields are coming into one parenthesis. If it is a different category and different property for that, as a, then you have to open a, another parenthesis. So this one, make sure you have correctly placed. Otherwise, you, you if you get an error, it's fine. Sometimes you won't get the output also. Okay. So first thing is, uh, type plays a uh, um, good one over here. So type is, in, here I mentioned as identification reference. So this makes a bridge between your uh, list report and an object page because on what basis uh, the system should decide, okay, uh, the object page in section one, only these fields to be displayed, right? So that, that determines based on the type. The first one, the first example is a very simple um, value in the object page. So I'm using identification reference and position where, where you want to do is maybe you can start with one, two, three or 10, 11, 12, make sure there is a sequence and there is a label over there. Now, 
this is the uh, item level means fields the fields are displayed in my um, metadata file so in that i'm going to use maybe consider there are five fields in my uh, metadata file and i'm going to use only three fields for identification meaning out of five only three fields to be displayed in my object page so this is the connection between the type and your annotations in your line item okay so identification reference means this annotation to be placed in the line item make sure these are the fields to be displayed in my object page. Clear? Another one. This is called header section. So header section is nothing but I want to uh, give a overall idea. You are just seeing the information belongs to this purchase order. So I want to display the purchase order number in my header section. Okay. How to do this uh, in the annotation level? And this information is all coming from your consumption view. This is the label, uh, whatever I have given while creating a consumption view. Okay, this information, object page details are coming from my consumption view. So now go to the annotation level. So in annotation, I am going to use a different type called field group reference. Okay, so now I am going to connect this uh, header, whatever the section, okay, the section and the item because the connection is always be there, right? Uh, this is my header and uh, what are the informations you want so the connection is always to be there so for that this type is, is has different options the previous one is identification reference now is a field group reference we have called it as collections so it uh, depends on your need we can keep on changing the type so now we are going to use field group reference and one more property here i have added is target qualifier and this is a custom name you can give anything it's not a format you have always give a letter and colon and no just give abc whatever you want okay so this is in the header level and the item how the item is recognized based on the field group okay so field group reference so using the field group property this is going to be mapped now and qualifier is the same name whatever you're giving in the header to be in the item level also this is a connection between this header and item out of three fields i'm going to display only the one field in my header section and under the annotation there is a field name always but i didn't mention it but if it is a three lines consider there are three uh, fields over there purchase order number company code probably material or purchase order item okay out of three i want only purchase order to be mapped with my header section so that is the meaning of this annotations okay now the type is field group reference the new property is target qualifier the next one is i want to display my um, display some more details in my object page one is header already done and i'm going to add a tab here called item and material details and inside it i'm going to display two different uh, maybe values i can say okay uh, they call it as parent one, child one, and child two. So you can have child three, four, five, everything. Okay. So the technical thing is, I have one parent. This parent has two different childs. So how to do this in the annotation? And this is going to be continue of your header. I'm not removing the header annotation. So it's going to be the continue one. So the code is in the header level. Um, header field group reference. This is for header. For a parent, I'm going to use different property. Um, see, this is the one. Uh, this is for your reference. I just made this change. Um, open bracket and close bracket. And every different properties are mapped or contained in one set of parentheses. Okay. So for parent one, the property is ID. Uh, this is custom name. Give whatever you want. And the type is the collection. Okay, so collection is, is going to be used over here for the child. Okay, so this is a parent and what is the label of your parent, PO item and material, what is the position? So this is a suppose if you have multiple parents, then positions plays a role over here. Position one and suppose you want, because if you're not giving a position, then um, the particular items or particular tab is shuffled based on the um, ascending order, I believe. But I didn't try it. Okay. Uh, so if it is multiple parents, then you need a position. If it is a single parent, it's fine. Okay. It means multiple tabs. If it is multiple tab, you have to use the position very carefully. And then child, it's a continuation. So here you can see this one is separated by comma. Okay. This is for parent and the separated by comma. I'm going to do the child. Everything is in the header level. So child one is ID. Everyone needs an ID. So C1. 
Question one, type is field group reference. Okay, so you know what is field group now. Field group reference has a tar target qualifier. Then in the item level, you have a property called field group. Okay, that matches which fields or which values to be displayed. So here I mentioned target qualifier is FG item and child two then ID type again field group reference, different label, the, the same parent. So here it's a parent ID, I capital. Parent ID is P1. This is also belongs to the same parent. Target qualifier is different. So in the line item, we have to consider like I have 12 fields, for example. So two comes to this FG item and maybe three comes to this FG material. Depends on your need. So how is going to be in uh, a line item level? So line item level, this is just for reference. If it is a child, because don't worry about the parent. Parent uh, thing is only that creation of tab it doesn't have fields right so there is no code required for your parent in the line item level only for child you need a code in the line item level so line item you have a child one this is just for a reference i made it there is no parent this is just for to put it okay i just copy only the content so here out of three i want the field one and field two coming under my item Okay, so you have to mention additional property field group qualifier. This we have seen previously the same syntax. We are going to use it here. Okay, and for child two, this is child two header information FG material. So I'm using maybe position four and five, fourth and fifth field. I want to be displayed in the child two information. So that is I'm going to use qualifier FG material and FG material wherever whichever fields you want. So here also you can see this is one property. So one bracket, parenthesis and comma field group has different uh, property. It has a different bracket and parenthesis. Make sure these are in the initial stages a little bit important for an abandon. Okay. So the output is whatever I have shown. So this is the output. So based on the header, it just uh, kept only this name. And this is child one details and this is child two details. This achieved using type field group reference. Now I'm going to have one more design. So here I have two tabs. Okay, so technically parent one and parent two. So parent one is designed based on field group reference and the type of the parent one is collection. So it has a collection of childs. Now parent two, it's not necessary. You always go with the type collection. It can have different one also. So that's what I tried. So the header information for parent two is identification reference. So parent one is collection. Parent two is identification reference. You can have whatever you want depends on your business uh, requirement. Okay, just play around. So if it is an identification reference, I don't want to mention the child's. Okay, I don't want to a different section. So child one is one section, child two is a different section. But for parent two, I want everything displayed as identifications. So whenever there is an identification in your line item, those fields are coming, gathering and displayed in your parent two. Okay. So, oops. Okay. Uh, I don't have the line item because line item we have already seen. One minute. Um, this. Right. So whenever there is an identification in your uh, a line item level, automatically those are coming under your parent two. That what it men mentioned in the header level. Okay. P two S type is identification reference. Clear. So it's pretty simple. Okay. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'll walk through this in the code, then see how it reflects in your UI page. And again, I'm facing the same issue. It's not refreshing. Or even a small change, I have to delete my binding and definition, regenerate it. So that is the reason I have the code ready. Uh, I'll just walk through it. Mostly that will be connected with your examples, with your samples. And uh, always I'll just keep my code in my drive. So whenever you require, you can download it and just try it yourself and make a change based on your need. Okay. Let's get into the system. So this is the metadata file, which, <coughs> which I created in the last video. So I'm going to do the change in the same one. There is no change in my interface or consumption view. Okay. So it's pretty same. I didn't do anything over there. So here, this is the first one we're going to add considering this is a header information. Okay. 
for the object page. So here we have added this is for the list report and this is for the object page. I mentioned the purpose is standard and type is identification reference. The position is 10, label is POD ties. And whenever there is a field or property we call it as identification that mapped with this type. Okay. So the object page is going to be displayed only these fields uh, ABLN, ABL, EL means okay, uh, purchase order number, purchase order item, and then company code. So this one because that's also having identification only three, I believe. Remaining, I didn't add the identification annotation, so it won't consider that. So whenever there is an identification reference, make sure your identification is added, the property is added in your line item also to define or determine, okay, these are the fields to be displayed in my object page. So if we go here, control if I refresh, so I already deleted an act, regenerate it, so the refresh is working now, okay. Um, so here, this is the first one with the saved variant PO search. That's what it, it's coming after refresh also. That's fine. Just give, click go. And I'm saying 3004. And this is my object page. It's coming from consumption view. PO details, uh, labels and everything. This is uh, maybe a not a structured way because now I'm, we are trying to understand the basics between the list and object page. So once we're comfortable with that, then play around and you can change the design, whatever is required or whatever is it's, uh, needed for you. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a header page, everything in one shot, I'm going to do it. Header page, so header section is going to be here and two different tabs. And the first tab is, is going to be get the data by field group reference. And second tab is going to be take the data from the line item as identification reference. Two different types we are going to use in the tabs. Okay. And the first tab has two childs, and second one doesn't have the pa child parent relation. It is going to work with the identification reference. Okay. Now go to the code. Okay, so here, yeah. So now I'm going to consider this uh, as a header section, right? So I want a header. And the identification is field group reference. Uh, maybe, okay, I can delete control space bar. Uh, sorry. F I, yeah, field group reference, comma. And I need to add one more property called, sorry, uh, there is a comma over here, then only that recognize, okay. Target qualifier, and it's anything. So for a, a easy reference, I go to FG header. Okay, so now you have to add this in your item. So which one you want? I want only my, um, header and then purchase order number to be in my header. So I'm going to add it here. I'm going to pick this position. So that is a different uh, property. So field group and here it is qualifier and paste it. Whatever we have copied, I just pasted it. So it's closed. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, more than one it happened because I copied with the single quotes. Yeah. Okay. So hope things are good. So I want only this particular uh, PO in the header section. Okay. Act over it. So let me try refreshing. Go back. Control F I. It should happen actually, this is a basic one, but I don't know um, the connection or the configuration, not sure. So still it shows the previous one. So normally what I did, I deleted it and uh, do that one. So I'll show you uh, how the steps. So before you delete, if you want to delete any binding, make sure just unpublish it and right click delete. Okay. After that, delete the definition and you created your own. 
So let me pass it. Um, maybe I can show you, maybe it, it may be useful for some other time, not every time for you. Just I deleted it, delete my binding. And then even binding regeneration also not work for me. So right click, delete the service and definition. Okay, this is not going to happen in the real time or the proper system. So new service definition, CGI, SGPO. Uh, just description SD, it's fine. Service definition, next and finish. Then act ordered. So this is one of the reason I'm not adding the uh, code and just go and refresh and show you. Uh, sorry for that. So is binding. And this is V2 now. Next and finish. Then act ordered. You will get your entity here. Okay, act ordered. Okay, activate. Oh. Okay, and then publish. Yeah, sorry. So publish it, it's activated and publish it. And now I use the same name. So now if I go use the ref, uh, ref, no, sorry, refresh, then it works. So normally if it happens, if you give the same name, it's fine. Otherwise you got to copy the URL and come for the testing. Just click go. Expecting header information. So this is the header information. Okay, so just a header section and I chose only the purchase order information. Now I'm going to have two tabs. First is with child, second one is with identification reference, okay. So the codes are ready. So better I just copy paste that. Okay, so this is a code which we have seen the first one for field group. The second one, the first tab, I'm continuing by just separated the first one by comma with the parent. So the parent ID is P1, type is collection. This is the third type. The first type we have seen is identification, second one is field group, third one is collection. So collection has a label and it has a position because I have a parent 2 as well. So I mentioned the position as 2, actually it's 1. So I want this is going to be the first position and just let me make a position 2 for the parent, that's fine. So this is my first parent details. Okay, so this makes only the tab along with the label. And the child is the ID is C1, it's anything, it's a custom, you can do whatever you want. And the child is going to display the value by field group reference. So type can be anything, it depends on your need. And that has its own label and the parent ID is the first one. So this is the uh, mapping between the parent and child. And the value is target qualifier because it's a field group and this is the value of the uh, qualifier for the line item. And child 2 may be the section 2, the same parent um, using the same type field group, material data is different label, parent is same and this is a different uh, qualifier compared to the first child. Okay, so two different uh, set of fields we are going to recognize based on the qualifier value. And then parent 2, so everything is separated by comma and it's continue here, parent 2, different ID and parent 2 details are coming under identification reference, so it doesn't need a child, okay. And labor is vendor and payment, oh, sorry, label is vendor and payments and position is 2, okay. So this makes the second tab with the label, vendor and payments. So that's it in the header level. Um, item level, so qualifier FG item, you can see the FG item. So this is still the header information, only the PO number to be displayed. And uh, this here FG item, I'm going to display, the child one is going to display the IPO item and the FG item is company code is going to display the child one. And then child two, I'm going to display few things. The qualifier is material over here. I'm going to display the matner. Um, 
with in the child two and what else material group in child two okay so this is for parent one child section one section two or child one and child two information in the line item level and then parent two is identification sorry identification so wherever you are seeing the identification annotation all the fields belongs to parent two okay so here you can see many fields actually it is there uh, even start from item number okay uh, even i want uh, uh, po number also po number po item number actually uh, label says only vendor and uh, payments only vendor and payments to be done but um, i didn't commented it so that's why it's it's came here it's all the things will come in the parent two tab so now i decided only these two but uh, these are used for other um checks i didn't remove it okay let's see and we'll remove and i'll show you that one that one also so only thing is i have regenerated that's that is the only problem for me okay let's see and it's already regenerated control f5 and go 305 this time so here uh, you have the header section and the parent one two different um, childs or sections you have item details and material details and vendor and payments this is coming under uh, identification reference so whenever there is a wherever there is identification mentioned in the line item all the fields are displayed here okay start with purchasing document uh, item and everything i planned only vendor and the term, uh, terms of payment terms so what you have to do is you have to comment it you have to just take out the identification from wherever it's not required so this one you have to take it out so then those fields are not displayed in your parent to information okay so we have a lot so this is just a beginning of how at least we organize the fields uh, without much coding at least with more of annotations how we can organize and display or generate a ui report so hope this video might help just play around with those more annotations and the control spacebar will give you all the things for you right annotation control spacebar will give you all the properties belong to that annotations so play around and just change whatever is required for you and we'll learn more in the following videos. Thank you so much for your time. See you in the next video. Bye.